Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man who gets, who's always angry when I tell him that he can't eat writers. It's Chris Kelly. Hi, everyone. You know, every shoot, I bring you on, we make a deal, I say you can have, what, the script girl, I say you can have one of the PAs, but you're like, I want to eat the writer. Why? Why you do this to me? I mean, I don't know, but uh, it's, it's not, they, they, they generally have a lot more meat, uh, meat on them. Yeah. They work a lot harder, so it's very tender. It's like a scorpion and the frog thing with me and you. I keep hiring you and you keep stabbing me. It's like a serp- serpent and the rainbow thing with me. But your, perf- <laughs> but your performances, though, I got to tell you, they're authentic, Chris Kelly. Yeah, everybody believes me as a bloodsucker. So. People see you on screen and go, yeah, that, that, that guy's not human. That guy, something's going on with him. He's legit. He should take off those silly ears. <laughs> I say, what ears? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't even have them. I don't even know what you're saying. Now, I have another question. So we're talking uh, Shadow of the Vampire. It's kind of a, a meta co- horror comedy about the making of Shadow of the Vampire. But they're saying, what if Murnau, the director, actually hired a real vampire as opposed to Max Shrek playing a vampire? Now, I have a question for you, Chris Kelly. So would you rather work a 10th month job as a PA locking up outside of a building just so when the red light's on, you stand there, right? And you just lock up every day for 10 months, right? Flat fee, you make what you make. Or would you do a sixth week, six week shoot working first team? So you're in charge of the act, the main actors. And one of the crew members, one of the actors is a vampire. So you have six weeks and you make the same money. So you, you work with a vampire for six weeks or you stand outside of a building for 10 months and lock up. I think I'd pick the 10 months. Yeah. I think, I think the, I think the, the six weeks with the vampire seems, Seems all right at first, but then whenever they're like going like, "Hey, would you would you mind going back into town and do you have, <laughs> would you mind going getting getting that small child over there?" Oh yeah, so not you'd be like a familiar. So not only would you, yeah, would, I would not. I I'd be I, I I probably would turn into what's his name, the guy that that's insane and eating bugs. Oh, Renfield. Renfield. I'd have to be him because then he I just like yes, master, and go running off and like that. Ah, dang Ma- it! Imagine what his trailer would look like, and it would be all nights too. It would have to be nights, and he'd have to black out his windows. You go into his trailer, you got to clean up stuff. Or he would have his trailer inside, and they would only do, um, oh. they could only do stage work. Yeah. And then he'd have to stay there. Well, no, he wouldn't have well, to Well, you could there. do all stage work now because of, you know, back in the day, you couldn't because of the warehouses we shot in. But now with these really nice stages, yeah, you have you to could. walk into doors to walk into them. They're completely, yeah. there's no sunlight. Yeah, I think it wouldn't be all that terrible. But I think going to get the errands to uh, to get people for him to eat would probably be the worst part about it. But then again, I don't know. Think about Charlie Sheen where he was always getting his prostitutes. Yeah. And Young Guns. <laughs> and Major story. League. Those stories are insane. Like, so that reminds me of Jay and Silent Bob where they're like, wait, did Ben Affleck kill a prostitute again? Like you'd have to – like did the vampire kill another grip? Like you'd have what to go that, in there. Um, oh, what was that movie? Man, Was it Man Bites Dog? Where it's yep. the, 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 the documentary crew <laughs> yep. that's following around a serial killer. And then they start sympathizing with him and helping him out. And they're like, we got to get rid of this body. <laughs> and like, that's kind of what it would turn into. Like, oh, yep. oh, what was that movie about the Berlin vampires? The Berlin vampires. Do you remember that? Was it called Vampire? Das. <laughs> das vampire. Did you see that movie? It's like where they got the idea for what we do in the shadows. Oh, no, I did not. Oh, I forget the name of the movie. It's so damn funny. And it's like, they're like, you know, they're, we wanted to make a documentary about the Berlin vampires. And they get opens up and the guy's like, hey, come on into my house. And the sound guy's like, oh, thank you very much. They slam the door and then all of a sudden this gush of blood hits the window. <laughs> it's like six months later, we tried again. And then he's like, oh, welcome to my house. Come on in. The sound guy's like, Okay, cool. You seem really nice. Slam the door, blood flies. I was like, all right, six months later, we're going to try again. <laughs> that sounds like a sound guy because I've worked with some sound guys that are gung ho. Just, they'll, oh, yeah. they'll they're, do it. They're, 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 they're very dedicated. I mean, without sound, it's, I mean, literally without, with, it's Nosferatu. Well, I mean, silent films, I mean, well, you could go to that <laughs> argument all day with do films need sound. And what was it? Well, I forget the name of the producer who said, um, nobody wants to listen to an actor talk. But uh, forget the name of the producer who said that. Well, he was wrong. Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, it was a hard transition from silent films to talkies. A beautiful film that illustrates that is the artist. Because a lot of these actors, they didn't speak English or they spoke very little English. Yeah. But they looked gorgeous on camera. And that's all that really mattered because you could say whatever you wanted. And as long as you put up a card that said, oh, you know, whatever. As you see in Nosferatu, um, that would, that's how the movies were made and did people actually care to hear their voice? Not really. I mean, but you could get into that argument all day, especially like with uh, Hell's Angels. So it's like people wanted to hear sound. They didn't just want to hear a symphony. I mean, we're past that now, though. Oh, way past that now. People want to, people actually want to, like, they want to, they want to watch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and smell the factory. Oh, that'd be great. 
They made they did that at the plaza. Was it the plaza or was that the sniffing chocolate? No, I mean they had it pumped into the oh, room. Is that, I don't trust that. What was it called? What are they? Was it called 4D or is that? Called? Yeah, 4D. Yeah, that's like that smell and taste and that's you get that's punched. don't go to Raging Ball. <laughs> Saw Rocky tough. three and 4D. <laughs> Eight, 200 concussions. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. <laughs> I do. You know what I do love when when sound came about, they just started remaking every silent picture. They're like, they made remake a, them with sound. <laughs> they, they made a lot of them. Uh, like I said, Hell's Angels, I think, was the biggest one because that was the most expensive silent film I think of the time. And when he showed it, um, uh, why does the name escape me? Dustin Hoffman. Um, yeah, Dustin Hoffman. Howard Hughes. When Howard Hughes showed it oh, yeah. to people, they they didn't like it because they said, "Well, we can hear, we can actually go see a movie and hear their voices." Like, but you're watching a hundred fighter pilots shooting at each other once why wouldn't you want to watch this and they're like we want to hear it and he's like we're reshooting the movie and they're like how are you going to reshoot this movie it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and he's like uh let me do the talking Hughes had some battles with you know the Hayes code later on trying to make scarface oh yeah and then they had to put the title up in the beginning like listen this is a movie about gangsters but this guy's evil we do not condone what he does and he suffers for what he does and you're like geez louise they really, uh, but yeah, I don't know. they really had to put it in there because it, you had I mean, to. You, 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 I mean, at the time, I mean, people were watching these movies. I mean, people don't think about it nowadays because it's just normal. But in those days, when you put out something, they thought you believed it. That's why they have to put things saying like, "We don't condone this at all in movies." And it's like, well, why would anybody condone killing people randomly? And you're like, well, it's a movie. And you're like, but that doesn't make any sense. But you can get that argument all day. Remember when we made that movie about Jello monsters taking over the United States, and we had to put and that, you believed it, and we had to put yeah, we had to put that. <laughs> It's, I was like, it's happening. It is happening. <laughs> Listen, if an airplane full of jello falls in a lake, we're all dead. But, but, uh. Prime example, Utah. We had to, <laughs> We did. Well, we can't even talk about that. <laughs> so, I mean, I remember we had to put the title card up. We do not believe that jello monsters will destroy the United States. And then I remember in very small print, I'm like, I do. Yeah. In parentheses, Mark Hoffmeyer does. <laughs> But everyone else doesn't. <laughs> Actually, Mark Hoffmeyer really doesn't, but he's stubborn. And then in the bottom, it's like he does. In the credits, it puts Mark Hoffmeyer thinks this is going to happen. Like, that's one of the names of one of the electricians. He actually bought stock in Jell-O. Yeah. In the- <laughs> I was waiting. I used to sit in the Great Lakes. Just, come on. I don't know how they deliver Jell-O. I assumed it was by, by uh, parachute cargo. And to be honest, there's more to Jell-O than that. There's a lot of death that goes into Jell-O. You know what I want to invent? from a man who's... <laughs> I, I want to invent... Uh, a, a company called like Excre- Extreme School Supplies, and, like, <laughs> and I want to be like Extreme Paper Clips. <laughs> and the way the paper the paper clips are neon, right, and like little strips down them, and they get delivered by a cargo plane just dropping parachutes down into like a, a, a Office Depot's parking lot, and that's how you unload it. You just hear a giant whistle as it's coming down. Yep. And there's a little land, like the pad meets there. That's how good technology is. But we skydive every delivery. Every paperclip gets delivered from air. That's some tough school supplies. And when you open it, it goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I just ordered the erasers. Is your desk job boring? Try while hang gliding. Paperclip coming at you. You have one of those desks, <laughs> you're hang gliding, and you're doing your work on it. Like, <laughs> like po- made out of post-its with yeah. a mix up. Like, <laughs> Extreme paperclips! Glue sticks flying from the sky. Extreme glue sticks. <laughs> that smell like Red Bull. All right, so we should get back to Shadow of the Vampire. What movie were we talking about again? Yeah. <laughs> so this movie, I got to tell you, this has long been one of my favorite movies. And I'm very happy that you decided to join me on this. I, I, how did this come about? Did you, I, I rec- you recommended it. I recommended it. I think it was I a joint. I think we looked at each other and went, Shadow of the Vampire. <laughs> Let's go, hey, what should, what should we, we do next week on a, on a count of three? One, two, three. And I was like, full loose. <laughs> um... But this is a very good movie. Yeah, and this is one of my my personal favorites. I remember purchasing this at Blockbuster whenever they had their whenever you could they they would rent out their movies and then they got too old to rent out. They would then sell them for X amount of money. And I think I bought this with the full Monty. Oh, that's at the cool. Same time, yeah, it's a, it a great movie because it's and with this film, I, I love that they had the same crew that worked on Nosferatu. The like, and then they just brought them into like 
So the people who worked they made on, them characters. Yeah, they made the them movie. characters. I mean, it was I'm, obviously we all. This is I mean, not Fritzy worked on it. The, this is not um, fact based. No, obviously there was no it, vampire. Oh, was there? Well, I mean, it's based on the mythology Jello. that of the Jello mythology that that Max Shrek was actually a real vampire. People assumed over the over time, as we always do, as we come up with our own ideas ideas of what happened in this filmmaking. Um, that Max Shrek was just this person that was found. Uh, obviously, he was. Was not he was a well-known the- theatrical and movie star in germany at the time he ended uh, up but, dying in 36 so he wasn't a vampire yeah exactly he was not a vampire uh <laughs> or is he or was he, he everything just, we say on this or I, was it i saw him last week <laughs> same guy what shrecky <laughs> <laughs> that dude's awesome man gave me 20 bucks yeah uh, he <laughs> wanted to change his name after those animated pictures he goes by max now yeah <laughs> But he he was a very well known actor. Um, well, German in Germany yeah. in Germany, and this was a German film. Uh, but one thing that was not well known in Germany was method acting, mm-hmm. which was the reason why people were kind of weirded out by him because uh, Max Schreck went to go study in uh, Russia for his acting, which they were just, they were working on. Um, method acting so becoming the actual person as opposed to you being yourself and then going on screen and doing a performance max shrek was becoming the actual character Mm -hmm. which really would freak anybody out if you've ever worked with anybody who is a method actor um eric stoltz is a method actor which was what cost him the marty mcfly role hey and that's a true story he wouldn't stop playing rock and roll in his trailer (laughs) well he kept he kept freaking people out because they were like dude calm down you're not always have to be on edge yeah this isn't a method acting this isn't Lincoln. this is not exactly and that, that would scare the crap out of anybody um i hear daniel day lewis is actually really good to work with but he's also kind of a pain in the ass but um i've never worked with him so i can't say that for a fact but that was with max shrek so when he came when they found him in in russia whenever um murnau found him in in russia he was like I will be your vampire. I am a vampire. And he started doing all the studies on vampires. And he and Max Shrek believed that if they were to make a book about, because obviously movies weren't really that po- weren't as popular as they are mm-hmm. now, but he believed that if uh, they did write a book on vampires like Dracula, if it became popular, he believed that if a real vampire existed, he would hate it. Or she would hate it. So he was. that's why he has that line where he says, oh, that book, Dracula. Oh, I loathe that book. Because he would probably hate the book. And he was lonely. Uh, I, I like why he didn't like the book. Because he said, I don't like that Dracula in his ancestral home is pretending to be a human and serving a human with no servants. He's like, it's very lonely and it depressed me. I thought that was a really interesting thing to say. Yeah, and that would be accurate. Yeah. If you if this person had been around for, what, centuries? Imagine you walk into your dining room and Dracula's just throwing forks down going, Mother, <laughs> sound like Joe Pesci from Home Alone. Fricka, 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 fricka. Mashed potatoes again. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just taking everything and going, <laughs> <laughs> Like it. Roast beef, reza, reza, fricker, just drink some blood, you rope sucker. Yeah. But that, that, that's, <laughs> that's literally what happened. He really was like... He became this person. Now, I think Willem Dafoe, he received... No, I don't think. I know he received an Oscar nomination for this, and they also received an Oscar nomination for Best Makeup. But I, I do think during this that, you know, F.W. Uh, Murnau, Murnau, played by John Malkovich, I love Udo uh, Udo Kier in this movie. I love Carrie Ellis in this movie. Yeah. There's a lot of people, and I like Wolfie. I, I just... Uh, Henrik, the screenwriter. There's a lot of interesting performances in this film outside of Willem Dafoe's show-stopping performance. I mean, yeah. John Malkovich. John Malkovich is amazing in this. And he's, he's the hidden MVP. I mean, when he's screaming at a real-life vampire going, I'm going to cut all your close-ups. Yeah, I love that. And he's like, I body laughed. double for everything. Yeah. And I was like, yeah! <laughs> I laughed so hard. And then I remember he said, he made a comment to I'm going to cut all your close-ups. And then you cut to uh, Willem Dafoe. A close-up on Willem Dafoe. And then he goes... <laughs> he hisses in this movie. Uh and I, I guess like, like, this movie wasn't that big of a budget. Nick Nick Cage produced yeah. it. Eight, eight million. It was his first time producing. Too. He raised a bunch of money from like independent, like mm-hmm. like a bunch here from there, 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 and did it. Six week shoot. That's why I asked earlier if you'd rather do the six week shoot of that. But they moved quick on this. And I have a question. Did you read anything about the uh, d- director of photography from this movie? 
You mean in Nosferatu or... Oh, the... no, this this movie, Shadow of the Vampire. I don't know if uh, you've... Lou Bogu? Yeah. Uh, uh, like he was an electrician Bosch. on um, uh, Clockwork Orange, and he was a gaffer on Barry Lyndon, Shining, and uh, Color Me Kubrick. So he had already previously worked with John Malkovich, not that pri- uh, not that long prior after this movie. And the, the, this movie. a really interesting thing about him, I read some 